Well, good morning down to you. A little noisy this morning, standing here beside the 401. I kind of wish I had made a different choice before I started this, but I hope you can hear me okay. <laughs> it is on a Tuesday morning here, and I'm really excited to tell you just a little taste of the Bible readings this morning. And the reason for that is that there are four different readings that we go through each morning. And it is one from the Old Testament, one from the New, as well as a reading from the Psalms and a reading from the Proverbs. Now that changes up every once in a while, given the, the flow and the rhythm of the way the readings come. But today there was three of the four, were three of my absolutely favorite texts from Psalm 66 and from Ephesians chapter 1 and from Isaiah chapter 40. Proverbs 23 was the other one and I didn't, couldn't tell you exactly that psalm as clearly as some of the other ones. But it was interesting as I was listening and I thought, you know, Psalm 66 and verse 16 is the verse that God laid on my heart when I was ordained and officially ordained to pastoral ministry after 10 years of pastoral ministry at First Baptist Church in Thunder Bay. It doesn't exist anymore, but the congregation set me apart there. And my theme verse was, draw near all ye who fear the Lord and let me tell you what he's done for my soul. And I thought that's what I was setting out to do as a quote, licensed or ordained became a reverend, whatever, uh, pastor in that case, to say, listen, come here, everyone who loves Christ, and let me tell you what Christ has done for me. Let me tell you what he's done to the, the intimate, deep center, the erotics of my very being, my soul. Draw near, all you who fear the Lord, let me tell you. And I've sought to do that and sought to testify to God's goodness in my life before that, and I was determined to seek to do that going forward but I thought this morning you know I want to continue to tell people what he's done and sometimes the question can come up well who are you talking about what what God I mean for goodness sake now everybody's got some version of a, a higher power of some kind of of God and whether he's a God of the Bible or God of my own making or some little grocery store, grocery shelf God that I've taken this from this shelf and this from this shelf and this from this aisle and put them all together and I've, I've come up with the kind of God that I like. Well, what God are you talking about, Pete, when you say, let, let me tell you what he has done? Well, it's Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? This one who in love he predestined us to adoption as sons to the very praise of of his glorious grace. He's, he's a saving God. He's a God who's chosen to save us. He's a God to plan to save us because he chose to save us. That his determination to do us good, having chosen us and, and predetermined before any choices I made that he would make me his own. This is the God that I'm speaking about. And it's just a magnificent text there in the first chapter of Ephesians. And then, of course, in these very difficult days, I mean, we are under some new restrictions now. The entertainment source that we call the media in the news is telling us all the worst possible news that we can come up with these days. This spike here and second wave there and all of these different testings and all of these different results and Certainly, there's some difficulties, and again, I commend our governing authorities for clamping down on the laziness and the selfishness of people who care more about their own conveniences and the good of other people, and it's, it's discouraging that way. And, but Isaiah chapter 40 comes along. Comfort. Comfort my people. Right? Say to them that your warfare is ended, that you have received double from the Lord's hand for all of your iniquities. And of course, as you know, in verse 9, say to the cities of Judah, behold, here is thy God. That's, that's what we do. 
we comfort one another by holding up and asking people to behold, this is your God. This is who he is. And he goes on to extol him through the rest of that very well-known chapter in Isaiah 40. It's the culmination of those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They, they will have their strength renewed. And of course, those who wait on the Lord is almost the same Hebrew word as those who hope in the Lord. Waiting, hoping. Hoping has built into it the concept of waiting for something. That what we want has not come to pass yet, but we are so certain it will. Because those who wait on the Lord, listen, they will renew their strength. Those who wait on this Lord of Ephesians chapter 1. And, and those who wait on the Lord of this God of Ephesians chapter 1 are the ones that we are calling each other, draw near. Let me tell you what He's done for my soul, for my wife's soul, for my boys, for my daughters-in-law, for the church family that we rejoiced with outdoors with such great joy on Sunday morning. These folks are promised that those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. And yet you probably feel faint and exhausted. And Maybe you're some of the ones who are saying, look, it's not that I don't think we need to wear a mask. It's that I just don't want to. I'm sick of it. I've had enough. Maybe you're feeling today just as honest as people who say, you know, it's not that I think COVID-19 isn't real. I'm just, I am so missing connecting with people the way we once did. I just feel like I'm at my limit. Maybe you're some of those who say, you know, I just, I'm so frustrated with other people who, I'm, I'm putting in the effort and other people aren't and, and the disease is still spreading and what the heck, I'm just going to do whatever I want again. I've, I've had enough. Maybe you're struggling this morning even with respect to church. There are some of you who can't come. Your family work situation, the degree of vulnerability that you have with your own health or the health of those around you, the degree to which you believe and, and, and are struggling with the level of fear that it may not even seem rational to you but it may just seem to be almost incapacitating and all of those reasons because of all those reasons you don't you aren't you haven't you're not likely to anytime soon come back to in-person worship to the assembly the gathering of, of God's people like we're designed to be designed to operate like dear friends let me encourage you this morning let me ask you to draw near let me tell you what he's done for my for our souls that this God who's determined to set his love upon us not because we deserve any of it not to love us because we're lovely but to love us because it magnifies his grace to the praise of his glorious grace he will care for us and he calls us to wait and he calls us to wait with a sense of well it's an assurance of hope isn't it those who wait on the Lord you this morning be confident in the promise of God for you who promises to renew the lack of strength you feel. He promises to bring to pass His good purpose in Christ for you. His Son has not died in vain. Let God wash away our North American Christianity entitlements, the ease and comforts of North American life, the ease and comfort of Downsview Baptist Church in Toronto life that we have that we've taken for granted maybe too much and that maybe God has been someone who simply empowers the easy life that I have and almost like he owes us friends renew your strength 
with a fresh sense of who God is and know the invigorating joy that there is of sharing that with other people. Draw near, all ye who fear the Lord. Let me tell you what he's done for our souls. Share that with one another. Pray it back to the Lord. Do so with the kind of gratitude we spoke about on Sunday morning, intentionally and personally and prayerfully. Do it in the midst of your relationally connected fellowships that you have and see to it that it's observable that others can see that you love Christ that others can see that it makes a difference to us how we're going to live as Christians and to see God not only honored but to find that God is honored where God is well where God's dependent on God's relied upon where God knows and sees the expectation that we have of good from Him. Hang in there, dear friends. God is faithful.